Hi there and welcome back to the channel. Let's jump right into it. To create a new balance and profit and loss structure, we navigate to transaction code SPRO. Click on subreference IMG and then under financial accounting, general ledger accounting, periodic processing, document, define financial statement versions, we can create a new balance and profit and loss statement. So click on this one. Here you can see already existing ones, but let's now just create a new one. So we click on new entries and now we need to provide some more data. So first of all, we need to assign an ID. This ID can be alphanumeric and up to four digits. Let's just say test. Then we need to give it a name, test, balance and profit and loss structure. And then we have some general specifications that we need to maintain. So first of all, the maintenance language. So this is the language in which the text will be displayed also the language in which we enter the texts and also the language in which the system prints the texts. If we set the button automatic item keys, then for all the items we will define in a second, so the financial statement items, the system will automatically provide IDs for these financial statement items. For now, we will leave it deselected. Then we need to assign a chart of accounts to our financial statement version. So let's just open the search help and then we select YCOA in my instance. Okay. Then we have two more indicators, group account number. So if we select this option, then for each of the positions that we will create in a second, we can also assign a group account number so that the creation of balance and profit and loss statements for the whole group of companies, so from a group accounting perspective, can be generated. And we have the functional area permitted indicator. If we select this one, then the system would allow us to assign so-called functional areas next to our financial statement items that we will create in a second. For now, we will leave both of them deselected. Now we can click on save, just provide a customizing request and that's it. Okay, next off, we can click on financial statement items over here because now it's time to actually build this balance and profit and loss structure. As you can see, the system generated already a couple of positions that we cannot delete because each and every balance and profit and loss statement must contain those special positions, so to say. I brought you one example here on the right hand side. So this is a normal balance sheet that we will rebuild now. As you can see, a balance sheet always consists of an asset side and a liability side. And here on the asset side, we first have our current assets like cash and cash equivalents, short term investments and so on. Then we have property, plant and equipment, so long term assets. Then we have intangible assets consisting of goodwill and other intangible assets. And then we have other assets, as you can see. Okay. So let's rebuild this assets. You can see we have the node assets over here as well. And let me actually do a split screen. So it's a bit easier for us. We start by double clicking on assets and then we provide here an ID, let's say 100,000 like that. And then we will say assets like that and hit enter for now. Now you can see here, we created the asset section. As you can see, assets are now separated into current assets, investments, property, plant and equipment, intangible assets and others. So let's build the structure as well. This time we click on more, create items. And now let's start. We will provide a sub number, let's say 100,010 like that. And then we will say current assets. We also have 100,020 for our investments. Then we have property, plant and equipment, resulting in 100,030. I will just call it PPE. Then we have our intangible assets. So resulting in 100,040 like that. And then we have other assets. So we will say 100,050 and then other assets like that. You can see we created the substructure for the assets now. Now we click on the sub hierarchy. So the 100,010, we go to more and then again to create items. You can see now the substructure opened and now we can start again and say cash and cash equivalents and so on. So this will be 100,011 cash and cash equivalents. I will just forward here a bit for you. And that's basically it. As you can see, we are now here up until prepaid expenses. The same we can now do for all the other structures. So in the end, in this balance and profit and loss structure, you can assign up to 20 different hierarchy nodes. So meaning that I could create here a sub node again and one again and again and again and so on up until 20 different hierarchy levels, so to say. Once we reached the lowest level, let's say in our instance, this is the lowest level here, cash and cash equivalents. We select the number 
we click on more and now we can click on assign accounts as you can see the structure here opened so here we can now assign a from account and a to account so either we can assign single accounts or even ranges of accounts for our cash and crash equivalents let's click on the search help so let's search here for cash and our chart of accounts is YCOA we can see here petty cash amongst others so let's just select this one you can see the from account is now filled let's also include the to account cash again YCOA and we will say up until petty cash journal posting automatic only like that for sure the from account always must be smaller than the to account otherwise it doesn't make any sense because it's a range and now all the accounts included in this range are assigned to cash and cash equivalents normally those two indicators here are always set like this if we only set one of them for instance for the debit side this would mean that the account is only displayed in this structure if we have a debit balance for this account and also the equivalents if we only select credit then these accounts here will only be displayed in our structure if they have a credit balance and if we select both of them then the total of those accounts will always be displayed in the structure over here no matter if there is a debit or a credit balance for the specific account so this here is the best practice just do it like that and then click on continue now you can see we have a whole structure we have our assets we have the subgroup current cash a subgroup for cash and cash equivalents and then we assigned our general ledger accounts to this group we can click here on this symbol and as you can see three accounts have been selected and assigned now let's actually save our financial statement version we click on save and the system asks us whether we want to save or also to activate the financial statement version this means that this is a two-step procedure we could say save first and then we can come back here and edit our financial statement version once we activate it the financial statement version will be visible to our users for now i will say save and i can come back here and edit this financial statement version further and once i'm finished i can activate it okay this marks the end of the video i hope you liked it if so then please subscribe to the channel and activate the bell See you next time.